Hello, welcome to the LIHEAP Performance Management webinar on the LIHEAP Virtual Library. Um, just a quick message before we start. Uh, as you can see on the screen, this webinar features a hands-on activity uh, for which we recommend that you uh, access the LIHEAP Virtual Library in advance. Uh, the link to do so is on the screen. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over to Peter Edelman, and we start, and we will start the webinar. Yes, hello everyone, and thanks for thanks for joining us. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you. Um, first of all, I would uh, like to point out that we had a webinar on the Lahey Virtual Library last week. Uh, that was more of an introductory webinar. Uh, this is uh, for folks who are at least a little bit familiar with uh, the the virtual library. And it will, to a great extent, uh, highlight. Uh, sorry, will to a large extent highlight uh, what's new in the library, and also point out to you some of the, you know, to go over some of the basics, and also to demonstrate how the library can help you do your work. Uh, for this webinar, we expect to have uh, any type of grantee who's interested. Uh, that includes uh, tribes and territories, even though uh, there's not a requirement for. Uh, using performance management. It's still something that uh, is, uh, we believe is very useful for grantees. Um, and it involves different types of uh, uh, grantee staff, including certainly LIHEAP coordinators, but also LIHEAP fiscal and IT staff, especially to give an idea of what, uh, uh, what they can, uh, to give an idea of what the program staff are looking for. So at this point, I uh, would like to turn it over to, uh, well, to the next slide, I'd like to turn it over to Melissa. At this point, we, uh, the Performance Management Implementation Work Group is the, uh, the group that put together uh, this webinar and that um, has uh, put together the LIHE Virtual Library with the support of two ACF contractors, that's NCAT Enterprise. And uh, there are the, the sub team for, for the work group that has worked on this webinar, uh, you can see here. Uh, for today's presenters, we uh, will have the first three uh, that's Andrew, Bre Andrew Brick, Tracy Damaris, and Heather Jones. Unfortunately, Susan Marshall and Holly Ravis Lute are not able to attend. So now I'd like to uh, turn it over to Melissa Torgerson. Thanks, Peter. Good um, afternoon, uh, morning to some of you. Today we have an hour set aside for this webinar, um, but based on our last week's experience, we probably won't use the whole hour, but we do have it set aside. Um, of that hour, we've set aside 45 minutes to review and demonstrate the LIHEAP Virtual Library, and then we have some time for question and answer. Um, as usual, the handouts for this um, webinar, the slides, are available in your navigation screen in the GoToWebinar under the handout section. You're encouraged to ask questions as we move along today. Um, there, I'll show you in a second. There's a spot on your um, navigation pane where you're able to uh, type in a question. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and review and respond to them at the end of the webinar or um, in the middle if it's appropriate. And if for some reason we can't get to the question or it's very specific to your uh, uh, state or tribe or territory, we'll go ahead and answer via email. So on the next screen, we're going to just remind you um, what the sidebar looks like. If you're not seeing this cool big white panel, it means that it's minimized and you need to click the uh, orange arrow. And by doing that, it'll open this um, navigation pane up and you'll see a question spot where you can go ahead and um, type in a question for us as we're moving along. So today, um, when we set out to design, oh, actually, I'm, I'm going to start with a poll. I'm sorry. So um, we're going to ask you a question. Um, Jorge's going to go ahead and put it up and then show us the results. And really what this is getting at is how often you use the LIHEAP Virtual Library. Your options are often, it's my go-to website to get LIHEAP resources. Occasionally, I sometimes look for resources in it. Rarely, I prefer to look elsewhere. And then for those of you who um, may be completely um, confused, uh, what is the LIHEAP Virtual Library?
Do we have answers yet, Jorge? Um, we have about 70% of the attendees voting. So I will close the poll in a few seconds so we get those last answers in. Okay. So um, it looks like um, none of you use it often. Um, uh, the majority of you use it occasionally. Some of you only go there rarely. And we actually have over a quarter of you who um, are unfamiliar. So this might be an introduction um, to the library. And so um, hopefully by the end of this webinar, you'll have a better idea of, of what this is and how you can use it. So for the Melissa, folks, who, yes, go ahead. If I could, I did bring one of my staff. And I just want to say we should at least have 1% in that I use it often. Gary Roble of my staff, who I task with performance measures, says he's going into this library daily. Awesome. So is Sorry he ready to, to give the webinar then? Gary, are you ready? Melissa, ask you a question? Yeah, um, yes, I am, absolutely. It's very useful. <laughs> OK. All right, so we have one more poll. Um, and some of you, obviously, who, who um, answered uh, that you rarely or don't go in there um, are going to choose not applicable. But we want to know how comfortable you are using this. So um, you can see the options here. And Jorge will put up the poll. You're very comfortable. So um, Andrew's staff in New York could probably present the webinar. You're pretty comfortable. You know, when you do go in there, you can find stuff quickly. Um, you're kind of, you can find resources, but it's challenging. You're not comfortable at all. You, you, when you get in there, it feels overwhelming to you. And then for some of you, this might be the first time you've heard about the resource. So, Okay, Jorge, how are we doing? Great. So we have a um, good mix here, um, about 38%. Um, so a little over a third of you can find stuff pretty quickly. Um, and the um, other, another third of you are kind of comfortable, where the remainder of you are either not comfortable or it's your first time. Um, our goal by the end of the webinar is to have you bump up a, at least a category. And so um, that is our, our attempt here. And so that gets to the objectives of this webinar. We really want you, you know, this is, as Peter mentioned, this is the second of um, two webinars. The first one was really focused on folks who had not, um, were not already familiar with this resource. So this one is um, designed just a little bit differently. We really want to focus on new content in the library, but we still will go through um, the uh, few of the basics, um, you know, how to navigate through the tool. And then we will have hands-on um, demonstrations um, so uh, that you leave here feeling more encouraged to use the library as well as contribute to it. So uh, the way we're going to move through this is we're going to start with a um, brief introduction of the library and highlight the new content. Heather's going to do that. And Tracy's going to highlight the basic features of the virtual library, how to navigate through it, just a reminder for folks. We're going to do a demonstration. We have a question that came from a grantee, and we're going to use the library to answer that question. And then we're going to ask you to do the same thing. Um, and then uh, we'll end by providing you additional resources. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Heather Jones. Heather? Heather, I think you're muted. Sorry, I'm sorry, I thought I hit my mute button off. Sorry, yeah, thank you, Melissa, and thank you for getting me off my mute button. Apologize for that. Thanks for everybody for attending the webinar and being patient. Um, 
The Lahey Virtual Library was developed by the Performance Management Implementation Workgroup to assist grantees in understanding the LIHE uh, program in general. And it was designed by grantees for grantees that serve on the Performance Management Implementation Workgroup. The design was to show how um, all the topic areas are interlinked and also overlap because everything in LIHE kind of touches everything else. And so it was developed to help you locate resources based on your unique needs and then kind of step you through that process and thinking about how you want to use the information to design, manage, evaluate, and ultimately improve your program. So you can submit your own examples and templates and tools to make the LIHE Virtual Library resource truly shaped by us as grantees. We shouldn't have to go out and reinvent the wheel if we already have some wheels in our, our toolboxes and we can share with other grantees um, then we should do that to assist all grantees across the United States, including our partners um, that are tribes and territories. So some of the things that um, we want to talk about first is you should have this um, URL and you should already have the Waiheep Virtual Library up on your desk. If you don't, please get that up because we're going to have some activities around that. The Lighty Virtual Library actually um, can be found on one of several websites. It's on the OCS website the National um, Clearinghouse, LIHE Clearinghouse website, and it's also located on LIHE Performance Management website. And so although the virtual library is designed for LIHE grantee, grantees, it's also accessible to all the public. And in fact, yesterday I was, I was in a grantee meeting, not a grantee meeting, I'm sorry, sub-grantee meeting with our LIHE providers, and I always share this information and they can go out and find their own information on our LIHE virtual library. So I think it's a really great resource not only for us as grantee, but to share with all of our stakeholders if they have specific questions about LIHEAP that they would like to um, research and, and do a little bit more digging on. So just be aware that you can refer other stakeholders, including vendors, uh, your Public Service Commission, as well as your sub-grantees if you utilize them, or even state staff if they do that, to this virtual library um, to assist them in, in their LIHEAP programs and what they're doing. So uh, let's take a look at what's new. Um, what's new in the library? Um, the library, we've included some different information, but together with the National Clearinghouse OCS Surprise, and then our Performance Management Implementation Workgroup team, we've taken the following steps to review and update the LIHEAP Virtual Library. The first thing we did in the center of the Virtual Library is you'll see LIHEAP Program Basics. We refer to that as the mother bubble. Um, and it gives you basic program um, in information about LIHEAP. And then we went to update the performance management topic area. And we created a new fiscal topic area um, for fiscal management. And we updated our business processes to change that to more program administration because it seemed to fit what was going on out, under that topic area better. And then we also wanted to identify ways to improve the website functionality. And again, this is a work in project. It's always ongoing. And so if you see things that aren't working quite right, we certainly want that feedback, but I'll let Tracy cover how you can provide that feedback to us. So let's first go over some of the changes, and I'll take them one by one. In the mother bubble, uh, it does cover LIHEAP program basics, including the LIHEAP law and statute. If you want to, you can probably have this already bookmarked. It's the OCS website, but this will take you directly to the LIHEAP statutes and regulations and get you there very quickly. In case you've got someone asking you a question, this will get you there quickly and you can answer it and you can go through the assurances or describe why we do things the way we do. The other um, second area that we ask about is OCS provides grantee um, you know, directions under information memorandums, action transmittal, and dear colleague letters. And so again, that's on the OCS website. We're going right to that website. So it's a really quick way for you to go to the LIHEAP Virtual Library, and if you're looking for an action transmittal or information memorandum or maybe a Dear Colleague letter, you'll be able to link right directly to their website. It'll take you there, and then you can start searching for that. One other thing I should make a point of, there's no right or wrong way to approach the library. And so even among our, our work group members, we sometimes go under different topic areas to look for things, and you'll see that today when we're kind of demonstrating this process. The final thing that's developed in this area was um, examples of the program life cycles and timelines developed by OCS and LIHEAP grantees, including myself and my partner um, in uh, crime, I say, uh, Chuck from Connecticut has also provided a, uh, 
an example of what we use to actually take us through our entire federal fiscal year and what what things we need to accomplish and, and the order we need to accomplish them in staff and resources and time. And a tool is only as good as if it helps you. If it doesn't help you, then you certainly don't have to use it. But we've given the templates as well as an example of how we utilize those tools within our own state. Again, there's no sense in you having to reinvent anything if, if we have a tool that we've already done that might help you um, with your program administration of LIHEAP. So, in the next area, we developed a fiscal management topic area. We heard from a lot of, um, we get a lot of questions even when a prize is out uh, making on-site visits about fiscal issues, as well as some of the feedback we've received from OCS monitoring around fiscal issues. We've even had a lot of national training about fiscal issues. And so we wanted to create a topic area that was specific to that fiscal management component. And so we worked with OCS fiscal monitors, as well as our own state fiscal staff, to identify um, key categories and resources for this topic area. And so it asks things like, what are the basic fiscal responsibilities under the law? What are the costs allowable under the LIHEAP program? And how do I create a budget and track those funds? And that's sometimes a shared function between you, your fiscal department, and you as a program manager. And then how can you ensure fiscal integrity among subgrantee contractors and vendors? And then what's my fiscal reporting requirement for LIHEAP? What I love best about this topic area, and I shared it with our fiscal staff and asked them what they need is, you know, they're working on several different programs for fiscal um, in, a, in our division, in our department. I can point them to LIHEAP and I can say, here's your area, here's what needs to be done, and here's how you can support LIHEAP with our fiscal issues and be compliant with our statutes. And it's very helpful for them because they're not being given a lot of URLs or web links. They have one topical area they can go to. They can do some research and then ask questions and know, you know, this is what we need to do to support LIHEAP and its functions. So really excited about this new fiscal management component. The next area that we developed is we decided that we needed to really update the performance management topic area. And we needed to include, we first to include in there is how to, you know, why are they important and then how do we collect them? And all of us know after attending the national conferences for the past two years, we're now getting that data back and we now want to look at data validation issues. Is it accurate? Is it reliable? And what's the data telling me? And it's really revealing when you start going through those exercises at national training and you look at your data and you go, oh, this is really interesting and I can start asking questions around this. And so what do I do with the data I have? How do I share it with my stakeholders? And more importantly, I again, I'll go back to the meeting I had yesterday. I shared this information with my grantee, my subgrantees, and they were asking some really excellent questions. Well, where did this come from? And why is the data showing this? And have we thought about this? And my answer to them was I didn't have all the answers, but I sure was glad they were asking the same kind of questions I was looking at. And it can be very valuable to start great conversations about any changes you might want to make or it may reaffirm what you're already doing, but it gives you that opportunity to work together to improve your overall program performance if that's where you want to take it at that point. So um, I just really encourage everybody to do that. The next area that we went to update um, was the business process topic. It really didn't fit, so we thought we'd rename this to be program administration. And it was really designed to help less experienced coordinators more easily identify their incremental changes of program administration and development. It was kind of that go-to um, topic area after you've got the basics, how do I administer this program in my state? And so what you'll see there is you'll see there, your new coordinator at what minimum should I make um, sure that all my bases are covered? You know, I want to take a look at my own prog program. Where should I start now that I understand my program and design? Um, how can I make sure that our program documentation accurately reflects? We've done that here in our own state where we had policy and procedures, and then when we started looking at our state plan, we discovered that those weren't always matching, and so how do we true all of that up and make sure that it's all consistent across our program? And then the other area is, is that I've identified some areas um, that I'd like to improve, and how do I turn the best strategies for that improvement moving forward? And now that I understand the design and deliveries of the program, how do I actually evaluate if I do make a change um, what that change does. Does it make it better? Um, do I need to tweak with that more or make additional changes? So we're really excited about these new categories and subcategories, and they will be rearranged as resources and available after July of 2019. 
So we've worked, um, the Performance Management Implementation Workgroup has worked with Surprise and the Lighty Clearinghouse to improve the website functionality. Since the toolbox only saves locally to your computer, and Tracy will cover that when she goes over the basic functionality, it'll disappear when you leave this website. So we've added a message box to come up upon closing from the website that reminds people changes may not be saved. So if you have um, resources saved in your toolbox, that would be the point to go ahead and download them before you leave the website so that you don't lose those resources because when you come back onto the website, they won't be in your toolbox anymore. So we just wanted to give you guys, you know, a heads up, hey, you're leaving the website, you've got some tools here, so you want to make sure you download those before you leave that website. So finally, between now and October 1st, the Program Implementation Workgroup is going to be working with the LIHEAP Clearinghouse and Apprise to review all those topic areas within the library, replacing resources with more current versions where appropriate. We heard back when we introduced the LIHEAP Virtual Library in Baltimore, um, this is only going to be a tool that's going to be as good as it's kept updated, and that's true. If we don't update it with the most relevant and current resources, then the tool becomes um, obsolete and you're not going to use it and you're going to be frustrated by that. So we're going to work to make sure that all of those versions are updated and brought up to date with the current information we have in training. We want to incorporate more examples, and this is where we're really asking for your help. Um, more tools and templates. And particularly when you get into a, a topical area, and you'll see it, where we have gaps, where we have resources need to be developed for this particular area. You guys across the nation, there's a lot of people doing a lot of great work, and they may already have a tool that addresses this issue. We're just asking you to share that, and um, we'll, Tracy will talk about how that process works, but there's no sense, again, reinventing a wheel when someone's already done that work, and that just makes the program more successful across the country. We are also going to update some text introduction snapshots, snapshots. We want to get tightened up on that and be more clear and concise in that language. And then introduce um, some navigational aids like hover boxes. Also, renew, you know, kind of reduce that clicking factor. No one likes to go to a website and have to click six times to find what they're looking for. So we're going to try to clean up some of those issues. And then implement better analytics behind the LIHEAP Virtual Library so we can easily identify the areas of the library that are visited more often and kind of hone in on those areas and say, is this an area where we need to develop more resources or add more tools? Um, and again, we really encourage the entire United States, all of the grantees, um, to submit their ideas to that because I think that that will make the library um, more meaningful for everyone and rich and have more resources to draw upon for all of us as directors. So at this point, I am now going to turn this over to Tracy to explain the navigation and key features as a refresher for you all. Thank you, Heather. Nice job. So um, we're going to um, go over those key features, which um, you'll some, for some of you it'll be a refresher, but it sounds like some of you will be seeing this for the first time or maybe just the second time if you did attend last week as well. Um, we'll go over the snapshot and pathway questions in each topic area. We will also look at the toolbox. Uh, they'll show you how to gather and download those resources for future use. And then we'll look at the help and suggestion tools for grantees to ask questions or provide feedback. So here's a picture of the landing page graphic, which outlines the 10 focus areas for grantees as they plan, design, and evaluate your programs. Within each focus area, there are the two primary methods for exploring your resources. Your snapshot will provide an overview of the specific focus area. And then the pathway questions are intended to serve as the roadmap for grantees, where you can kind of start using those resources to make your plans to go uh, for the future. So each topic area will have its own snapshot. The snapshot provides an overview of the topic area for grantees. So it's going to give you the, the details about this particular topic. Uh, key elements of the snapshot will include your description of your LIHEAP topic bubble, why the LIHEAP topic is important, again, the legal citation and statutory relevance, so it will bring you right to those links. We'll have the highlighted resources, um, which will um, give you, um, you know, the reasons why you might be using these uh, resources, how resources can be used, 
And then the three bubbles down at the very bottom of the le- on the left hand side of the page are cross references. As Heather mentioned, you know, you may find something into performance management, but it may also apply to uh, another uh, category or a topic like vendor agreements or program integrity. So the, the cross cross reference links are right there as well. And the entire snapshot can be added to your user's toolbox, which will also include a link back to the landing page. For each topic area, the pathway questions are also available. These are, as I said earlier, intended to serve as a roadmap for the grantees. Category headings help users systematically think about each focus area. So once you click into, uh, for instance, this one, I don't understand all of the hullabaloo about LIHEAP program and integrity. Um, when you click into that one, you're going to get things like LIHEAP greater fraud pre- prevention controls are needed or um, the program integrity work group report. So it'll give you more details with all of that information. And then within that uh, category heading, the resources are sorted within each category to help you learn more based on what your needs are. Um, So resources listed anywhere in the virtual library can be opened and previewed in a new tab or added to your toolbox. Toolbox will appear at the top of the the library, uh, the, the big bubble. And then you'll just click on the box next to the resource, which will automatically add it to your toolbox. If you want to remove it, you just need to click X next to that link. So just like online shopping, those uh, resources are added are from the virtual library are added to your toolbox. And um, you can download them all into one folder for printing or later viewing, or you can um, you can X out of it, but then you'll have to research them again. So it's you definitely want to uh, download them. This is where you'll get the message when you go to um, get out of there. Um, the toolbox, because it is saved locally, means if you exit, your resources will no longer be there when you come back. So make sure you download those files or bookmark them for future reference. So here we're going to talk about the um, a little bit more of the, the top of the page menu, which is available for to users from anywhere in the tool, so it stays static on, on the top of the page throughout the throughout the, your use within the library. Your back to main page button will help you navigate through the tool. Um, your the the browser back button has been disabled to keep you from accidentally exiting the tool, which um, most people probably have done once or twice. Um, your help button will allow you to submit a help request ticket. Questions are sent on to uh, NCAT staff who will help you with your issue. It's not immediate, so it's not like an instant message, but um, they probably get it instantly, but may not always be able to reply instantly. So keep that in mind when you're clicking the help button. Your suggest a resource button will allow you to suggest those resources where you think something is missing or needed. As Heather said, um, you know, there's there's so many resources out there that um, that people are using that uh, would be nice to have them shared. Um, so we're constantly looking for resources that um, could be used so that we're not recreating that wheel. You can submit your own examples, tools, or templates for addition to the library. You cannot upload the documents at this time, um, so you would want to put a description in your suggested resources box with your name and email address. And then all the resources will be reviewed and vetted by the performance management work group and OCF before being added to the virtual library. So please um, use that as much as possible if you don't see something out there. And then, of course, the leave feedback button at the top of the page will allow you to provide suggestions or ideas. Um, Examples would be usability and navigation. How can we make this virtual library easier for you to use so that you want to come back or that you're sharing it with your uh, stakeholders so that they want to use it and and look for information out there as well or can find it easily? Um, In the pathway questions, are categories missing? And for resources, were you uh, expecting to see something but didn't? So leaving that feedback is extremely important for us. And I'm going to hand it back to Heather for a demonstration. Thanks, Tracy. So I'm going to demonstrate going out to LIHEAP Virtual Library and answering um, a particular question that Melissa indicated we received from other grantees. So I've been told that I need to do a better job monitoring my LIHEAP weatherization program. What resources are available for to tell me what I need to do and how to do it? So I would go out to the LIHEAP Virtual Library. And again, there's no one right or wrong way. And even, like I said, among those worker members, we all kind of approach it a little different. 
but I would actually click on the fiscal management component. And I would take a look at um, how do I ensure fiscal integrity among subgrantee contractors and vendors, and I would expand that. And then I would see that there are some risk assessment forms, including for my sub uh, recipients, but also at the very bottom, responsible for monitoring of weatherization spending. So that would be one area I could look and find that resource, click on it, add it to my toolbox. Um, or look online to see if that actually meets what I really want it to do. Um, or is it answering my question? Again, I might just get this information, gather it, uh, download it to my toolbox to look at later, or I might just get offline and look at my toolbox after I've completed that. So another place I would probably go look for it would be under Program Administration. And under Program Administration, I would most likely in this situation look at examples of other states administering the program. So I would want to expand that category and see, is there examples of when you approach different components of your program where I could look at how weatherization um, contracts are and the roles and responsibilities and things like that. So that gives me another indication of where I can go for weatherization information, whether I go to the LIHEAP Clearinghouse or I look at LIHEAP and DOE rules from the National Training or grantee roles and responsibilities, again, around that YouTube video. So that might be another possible resource. And then finally, I think one last resource I might click on would be um, my subgrantee and contract agreements. Um, since a lot of times we're entering into contract and agreements with subrecipients for weatherization, depending on our program structure, you can see there's a question I'd like to see example of subgrantee agreements specific if we expand that to weatherization. And that actually will take you to the National Clearinghouse. And so again, I can click on that, um, check it, it'll be a part of my tools, and go into my toolbox. So now I'm going to turn this over to Andrew, and he's going to actually step you through a hands-on activity. Heather, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so Heather did a great job demonstrating how to navigate through the mother bubble and all of the topic bubbles that support it, the surrounding bubbles. So I want to do a hands-on activity with you today, and I'm going to pose a question. So when we do this hands-on activity, you have the virtual library up, utilizing the link. You have it in front of you. I'm going to pose a question. I'd like you to navigate through the different bubbles to try to identify topic areas that will help you with the question that I'm about to pose to you. Please utilize, don't get too deep into it, don't start reading it, just look at the topic areas and click on them and then they will add it, you can add them into your toolbox so that eventually if you wanted to, you could download them. Today we're not going to, I'm not going to have you do that, but you'll have them in your toolbox, but we'll go through this process, okay? Try to keep track of them, check them, add them to your toolbox, see how many resources you can get. So the, the, the idea is to see how many resources you can gather. So it's kind of like a scavenger hunt. So the question I'm going to pose to you today is, I've been told I need to develop better subgrantee risk assessment and monitoring tools. Utilizing the virtual library, what resources are available to assist you with this? So click on the bubbles. I'm going to give you about three minutes or so, and then we'll put a poll up, and we'll ask you to fill out the fill out the poll, and then we'll give you the results, and and then demonstrate to you where we found some of these resources. So let's take a couple minutes, start going through the bubbles, see if you can identify some areas where you can get the answer to the question. I've been told I need to develop better risk better subgrantee risk assessment and monitoring tools. What resources are available to help me get this started? Is Andrew gonna whistle the Jeopardy theme I thought? I was just about to. Oh, good, good, okay, good. I'm waiting. <laughs> okay, ready? Let's 
little weak on that last whistle. I think I was running out of breath. Well, you yeah, guys get then, the idea. But no, it changes it changes uh, key right here, and then you have to do it again. <laughs> I need to brush up on that. I promise for the next webinar. It'll be just as bad. <laughs> Okay, so click around. Are you looking at data systems? Are you looking at fiscal management? Are you looking at program administration, performance measures, program integrity? Hmm? 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 How about some grantee contracts and agreements? What do you think? Maybe grantee training? I don't know. Let's see what we can find. We'll give you about another minute to bounce around, open up those bubbles, look at the topic areas, see what you can find. Expand out or collapse, and then that will allow you to check those boxes so that you can add them to your toolbox. And as soon as you check the box, you'll get the little up at the top, it'll say, My Toolbox. If you really wanted to, you could download these documents. Not asking you to do that today, but in the future, you will be able to have those resources. So you don't have to go to the virtual library, although it's the most recent, it's going to be updated. We'll continue to make sure that the data and the information that's available to to grantees is the most recent data and resources available. Okay, Jorge, you got a you got a uh, survey for me here. Um, it's twenty seconds until it's three minutes since we started the exercise, so uh, I'll let everyone wrap up uh, before opening the survey. Beautiful. Okay, so uh, it's been three minutes, so I think we can ask everyone uh, for, uh, you know, how it went for them. Okay, so the survey is going to come up on the screen. Let me get back there because I was bouncing into the virtual library. Okay, so the answers are, were you able to find three or more resources? Were you able to find two resources? One resource? You weren't able to find any resources. You knew what you were looking for, but you just couldn't find it. Or did you not, you didn't even know what you were looking for, which some days that's me. I just never know what I'm looking for. I haven't found it yet. That's a song, right? <laughs> you too. <laughs> you too. Yeah. <sighs> Still trying to figure out what I want to do when I grow up. Okay, so hopefully everybody's had an opportunity and we can get that poll completed. And then we'll come up, here's the results page. Or hey, this is all you. Um, so there's 62% uh, of the people who responded uh, could find three or more resources. Uh, and a smaller percentage of people found two resources or didn't find any um, because they either didn't know what to look for or because they didn't know what they were looking for. Okay. So for those 25%, right, let's uh, do this. Let's have Heather and Andrew walk through um, where they found these tools. Okay, Heather, I'm going to throw out the question, and then we'll walk through those bubbles, right? Okay, sounds good, Andrew. So I've been told I need to develop better risk assessment and monitoring tools. What resources are available to help me get started? So where did you start, Heather? I started in fiscal management, actually. Okay. And I looked under um, the third question, how do I ensure fiscal integrity among subgrantee contractors and vendors? And I selected um, subgrantee fiscal monitoring tools and then risk assessment and examples from Ohio and Texas. So 
So where did you where would you have gone, Andrew? Okay. Um, let me just pull that back up. So I would have jumped into the sub grantee contracts and agreements. Oh, let me click on the right bubble. And then I'd like to uh, look at some examples of sub grantee agreements with LIHEAP weatherization. Some sub grantee. Then right above that, the uh, sub-grantee agreement examples. And I went into the first one. Um, I'm creating or updating sub-grantee agreements. would like to have um, some idea of what I should be including. Yes. Um, yeah. And so there at the bottom there, I found um, risk assessments, monitoring, um, as well as a little bit more on weatherization, um, grantee roles and responsibilities. So, and I went to the same place as Heather in the fiscal management. And I think the reason I went to fiscal management is because I knew that um, there's monitoring under there and there's also risk assessments. But in addition to that, um, I would go to program administration because program administration monitoring is going to be one of those functions, even for a new director or one that's been for a while. And I probably look under um, the examples that other states use. I think that's about the fourth question down. And then you'll see under the different program requirements, um, if you keep scanning down, that there's a whole section on subgrantee agreements and monitoring. So these may be some of the resources that you went to, those people who found three or more, the ones who couldn't find what they were looking for. Um, you know, you kind of have to go around and see what you can find and see what makes sense to you. Again, there's no one right or wrong way, and we all, all approach it a little differently, but we do really ask that you give us feedback if you think something would make sense in a different area. Awesome. Okay, so in, to those means, let's see if we can uh, try another hands-on activity to see if we are more familiar with navigating through the uh, mother bubble and the supporting topical bubbles around it. So I'm going to pose another question out to the group. We're going to go through basically the same exercise. I'm going to ask you to navigate through the virtual library, try to grab some resources that will answer the question that we're about to pose, and click on them. You can put them into your, into your toolbox, and you'll see where they are. So it's going to be very similar. Let's see how many resources we can grab. So the question I'm going to throw out to you is, my vendors are telling, this is about performance measures, and I'm sure this is all near and dear to everyone's heart. As my vendors are telling me, these performance measures are a bunch of bullarchy. Oh, I mean hooey. Um, how can I convince them that these data are required and will benefit them too? So please, usually utilizing the virtual library, look around and see how many resources that you can grab so that you can inform your vendors, this isn't a bunch of bullarchy. You're gonna, we have to do this. It helps justify the program and program funding, and it really is a tool that helps us to better manage the program to push those limited resources that we have out to the people who need it the most. So please take an opportunity, look at the, the virtual library, look at the different topic areas, expand them out, click on them so that you can add them into your virtual into your toolbox. And let's take us three minutes or so and let's see how many resources we can grab and put into our toolbox. So I figured I'd just get, instead of doing, you know, the, the whistling, we just get into a little lose yourself by uh, Eminem. How does everybody feel about that? <laughs> I like you too. Can you sing a song, song what I'm looking for? I'm doing my marble mouth version of it. You know, it's like Buckethead, if you ever saw the guitar player that puts the KFC bucket on his head. Oh, 
Bono would not endorse me at all. Thus, I'm a state employee. Gary, how many resources did you find? You won't give me the clicker. <laughs> It's a great example. But to those means, I got to tell you, uh, just to, as long as I have a minute to fill, um, Gary's been working with our vendors. We had we uh, we pulled in another five vendors this year into the the uh, participating vendors or what we're calling our mandated vendors because once we let you into the pool, no one ever gets out. We just keep adding more vendors and adding more vendors. And uh, he had a vendor on the phone the other day, and I could hear him from my desk. And he's trying to justify to this vendor why he needs to give us this data. And ultimately, after he went through a lot of great reasons why, he turned to the gentleman and said, Sir, we're, we're authorizing $500,000 to your company. You, do you really, can you, if you, because the gentleman said, Well, I, not, I don't know, I might not be able to participate. And Gary turned and said, Could your business really? absorb a $500,000 hit not participating in this program. And I'll tell you, the bet, it really it turned the gentleman around to the point of there wasn't a doubt in his mind that he was going to participate in the program there was, and that he was going to be able to participate in performance measures. I'll give you the floor, Gary. I'm just going to say there was silence on the line after I asked that question. <laughs> I, think, I, um, think he I think he finally got it. Okay, Jorge, you got a poll for me? Yes. Okay, so once again, everyone, if you could, the participants, if you could uh, take a second, fill out this poll. Hopefully, we're all able to get three or more resources through this this um, activity. If you're only able to find two, please check two. If you're able to find one, check one. If you knew what you were looking for but couldn't find it, I'm expecting that you'll give us some good feedback on how to better navigate through those navigation bubbles and the topic areas. And if none, you couldn't find what you were looking for, just blame me that I did a terrible job in my presentation today. And I'm okay with that. I'll shoulder that burden. But I'm sure that we're going to get great results this time. Or at least move the needle a little bit. So let's all take a second complete that uh, survey, and then we can uh, get the results up, and we can go through the activity of explaining to you where the virtual library team found those it found that information. You may find it in one bubble, you may find it in another bubble. So but we'll, we'll let you know what we found. Okay, um, there haven't been any responses coming in for the last few seconds, uh, so we can go ahead and look at them. And it looks like 58% of people who sent in their responses found three or more resources. Uh, then 21% found two resources. Uh, and a smaller number of participants uh, found one resource. Uh, no resource because they couldn't find any or no resource because they didn't know what to look for. I think we moved the needle a little bit. So I, I'm seeing some better, a little better results. We went from 14 to 11 and uh, moved up a little bit on the top half. So I'm assuming that everyone's getting a little bit more familiar with it. And this information, um, you know, as you're utilizing this and become more familiar with the virtual library, you can see that we just did two examples with, you know, a really hard, one of them was really hard and one of them was a little bit of a softer question. But as you saw, we answered really, we had resources available at our fingertips that we're able to download into a toolbox that we could download onto our own PCs for future use down the road to be able to manipulate the data, put it into a doc. If you're using something, drafting stuff for your vendors, for other stakeholders, for your legislature, for your governor, your director, whoever. But within three minutes, we were able to grab at least three, two, one, some resource or at least be able to know that I could hit that help button and say, hey, I need some help being able to, re to navigate through here to get some data. You could send an email out to NCAT to the team and you will get a response. But generally, you'll be able to find at least some resource 
right at your fingertips that you'll be able to use in a short period of time. So I, I believe that's really a, 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 an amazing tool. Um, I, I, for my, myself, walking in, becoming into this position, um, this was established, and I have used it. And as it's be getting more robust and it's being improved and revised, um, this is just an amazing asset and a tool to be able to bring you from walking in the door, maybe not knowing about the program, to really being able to speak fluently about it. So I really want to push everybody to use this, and let's give you let's talk from the uh, the virtual library team. How did what did we do? How did we answer this question? My vendors are telling me that the performance measures requirement are a bunch of hooey. How can I convince them to uh, that these data are required and it'll benefit them too? So the first place I went was to the performance management bubble. Mm -hmm. And then I went down to, uh, how do I share, uh, actually, um, yeah, I think I went to how do I share my LIHE performance measure data with stakeholders. Um, that was more of sharing it, but I, but still, I wanted to, I want to share my data so that I can, um, what our current data is so that I can reach out to vendors and try to get them to report to me directly, which is what I'm in the process of doing. So these, uh, a lot of these links are very helpful. So I found a few links here. Great. And Heather. then I, oops, sorry, go ahead. Keep going, Trace. Yeah, no, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, like, so the example letter to leaders, uh, not that one, the energy vendors. That was the first one that I clicked on, the example letter to energy vendors. Beautiful. And then I also think under program administration, um, or pro I'm sorry, performance measurements where Tracy was at, the first question, why are they important? You've actually got um, a clearinghouse overview on that, and then also you've got a transmittal on performance measurements. And so you can actually cite the federal requirement as to why these are important. It's the federal requirement of our block grant. Okay. And yeah, so the policy else? of why we're doing this is there. Melissa, anything well, you would like to add about yeah, the snapshots or the executive super, summaries? Well, no, super. Um, Quick, uh, there were the executive summaries and snapshots that are available under the performance management um, that you can use to talk with your vendors. But someone brought up to me today, you know, uh, when we go to talk to the vendors about um, data exchanges, one of the first reactions we get is, this is too hard, it's going to be too much work. Um, and when we, what we find is that when we show them the templates, the data collection templates, or we go to the IT section and we show them, look, this is really what we need out of the system, out of your, you know, vendor system, it uh, makes it a lot easier for them to say, oh, this is easier than we thought, especially if you're talking with their IT folks. So they're not just tools to convince them that it's required and that it's useful to them, but also tools for helping them do the work of getting you the data that you need. I also found the multi-state vendor listing was helpful because if you have vendors who are across states and they're already, they may already be providing it to another state and they're already ready to go Definitely. to be able to provide that information. So that's helpful as well. And that and that's that's a really powerful thing. Um, you know, like a lot of the major utilities, National Grid, for example. You know, they are in so many different states. And when we when we brought this up to them, you know, they are they were already familiar with it. And then like on our oil vendors, you know, there a lot of them are utilizing the same data systems. And what we found is doing peer to peer, you know, utilizing this and then grouping them with peer to peer. And it really did alleviate a lot of the uh, anxiety. Um, so it was, you know, there's a lot of data available. So I won't get on my soapbox. So um, what we're hoping today is that you feel a little bit better about using the LIHEAP Virtual Library. Um, so we'd like you to answer this poll question so we know. Um, kind of how you're feeling as we leave the webinar. You would already master the LIHEAP virtual library. You are already confident, but you feel bolstered or you feel like you have some new ideas or inspiration to use this. Um, you feel a little bit better and you'll try to use it more often or you're still um, very confused and therefore will not use it often. If you could all select one. 
Jorge will read out the results. As you're picking this, I want to I'm going to kind of move ahead um, without the slide deck, but there are many ways for you all um, to get help you need or you know for those of you who said I'm still confused or or I, I can't find things there is the help button there's a lead feedback and even most to me most important what we want you to take away is to suggest the resource button we really want to fill this library with useful examples and tools and templates and things that are going to help you with your daily work and so this is really important um, in addition to these buttons on directly on the page you can contact us people um, on the next slide you'll see um, contact information for members of the work group. Um, Andrew from New York, Tracy from New Hampshire, Heather from Missouri, and Susan from Alaska are all very awesome people to talk with and you can reach out to them. You can also reach out to anyone on the Apprise team. Um, and I've got a list of um, names here, Kevin, Dan, Jorge. Um, Erin um, Stoyer from uh, NCAT, she's been critical in getting this library um, updated and put together and you can also uh, reach out to me. What's up? Um, Jorge, do you want to get the poll results? Great. Um, so at the end of the um, webinar, we have six all-stars who had already mastered the light heap of virtual library, but a quarter of you said you feel a little um, bolstered. Um, and uh, this is the result we really want to see, the 65%. You feel better and we'll try to use it more often, and that's a good thing to hear. For those of you who are still confused or um, you don't think you'll use it very often, really encourage you to reach out to us, um, give us some feedback as to what we could do to make it better, or ask for help so that we can make sure that you get what you need out of this, because that's what it's for. Um, I'm going to kind of end the webinar officially, but we're going to stay on for anyone who has questions, or Jorge, have we had any questions come in? Um, no, no, not question, no questions have come in yet. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and end the webinar. Thank you all for coming. We're going to stay on. So if any oh. of you do have questions, we'll answer them. Oh, Melissa. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, there, there are some questions. Um, okay. So... The first question is, where can we find a snapshot of what other states are doing? For instance, we are looking to change from seasonal to year-round, allow rent included with utility clients to receive LIHEAP and looking to develop state-funded LIHEAP. Uh, we would like to be able to see what other states are doing for guidance. Is that in the Lighthouse Virtual Library or somewhere else? It is in um, the virtual. So remember that these resources are scattered all over, but the Lighthouse Virtual Library has them clumped together. If you go to the Program Administration um, uh, topic area, there will be a section on um, how other other state examples, and under that, there are a number of um, of resources. Um, in terms of setting benefit levels, crisis programs, cost definitions determining LIHEAP eligibility. Um, and so I would start here. If there's something you don't see in particular, NCAT, which is where a lot of these resources are housed, has a summary sheet for almost all of the questions you've asked. So which states have rate payer programs, which states do um, you know, utility and rent, um, and then which states, um, uh, I forgot what the qu first question was, but they have these nice, oh, which program components um, states are offering. You can go and, and see these nice spreadsheets. So it will probably be linked here in the library based on the content, um, but if it's not, you can go right to the clearinghouse. And just let us know so that we can make sure it gets on here if you're not seeing something. All right, well, if, if something pops up, no problem, no problem. If something pops up as you're going through it, I'll certainly let you know. Um, and, okay, I don't think there are any other questions, Melissa. Okay, I encourage you all, if you think of questions or see or have ideas, um, we'd love to hear from you. So you can contact us using the information in the slides. Hope you all have a great day and a great upcoming uh, holiday. Um, take care. Thanks. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.